doctoral fellow from SRSI, Calcutta. So welcome, ma'am. Welcome, Irene Jaihal, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, coming with uh, and sharing your ideas, ma'am. Shall we start, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, who's going to introduce? Gomati. Ah, okay. We can start. Niranjali. Gomati. Ah, Niranjali. Niranjali, can you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Wishing everyone a splendid good afternoon for the day two FDP on aquatic and semi aquatic program in monitoring water quality. We would like to start this session by invoking God's blessings through a silent prayer. Thank you, everyone. Welcome the challenges. Look for the opportunities in every situation to learn and grow in this gym. With this welcome quote, I would like to call upon Dr. S. Gomadi, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, Rio Chidambaram College, to render the welcome address and to introduce today's resource person. Good afternoon to all. On behalf of Swology Department, Vivo Chitambaram College. Ma'am? Ah, yeah. Continue. 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 On behalf of Swology Department, Vivo Chitambaram College, for the one week faculty development program on recent trends in endemology. I, I would like to welcome you all. First, I would like to express my sincere. Gratitude to our Honorable Secretary, Respected Principal Dr. C. V. Rabahu, our HOD and Associate Professor Dr. T. Radhika, Coordinator Dr. P. Keita, Organizing Secretary of this program. I heartily welcome our eminent speaker, Dr. Irene Jakamalar, Post Doctoral Research Fellow, Zoological Survey of India, India, Kolkata present here to share their knowledge. She completed her UG and PG program in Muslim Arts College, Trivedam Court, Kanyakumari District. She received Professor D.A. Chandra Bose Endowment Award for the highest score in her MPhil dissertation from Scott Christian College. Congrats, ma'am. She joined as Junior Research Fellow in the Zoological Survey of India, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. She worked as a research associate from the year 2013-50 and as a young scientist from 2015-18 in the SRSI, Kolkata. She has published about 40 research papers. She described 27 new species of aquatic hemiptera. Uh, it is a credit here. With such rich knowledge, I hope she would be the apt person to conduct this FTP on insect hemiptera in monitoring water quality. I welcome you, ma'am. All the participants from other colleges, universities, and organizations to this interesting session. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for a warm words of welcome. Dear ma'am, with a great honor, I would like to hand over the session to you. Jagamala ma'am, you can take over the session. Okay, okay. Very good afternoon, everybody. Now I am going to present or uh, talk about this aquatic and semi aquatic hypericta in monitoring. Water quality. Aquatic insects are the insects associated with an aquatic environment and uh, it is spent one or more of their life stages. And nearly one lakh species are from uh, 13 different insect orders, they spent at least one or more of their life stages. And some of the aquatic insects are adapted to live in, in uh, marine and as well as estuarine habitats. And well, excuse me, ma'am. Can you please maximize your screen, ma'am? Yes.
everything. Can you please? Full screen. This one. Here we can. Okay, ma'am. If you're not, if you're not able to, it's okay. You can continue, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Then uh, this uh, these insects are adapted to survive in both uh, lentic and lotic ecosystem. Some species may found in this uh, standing waters and other bugs in uh, running waters, and some species found in both. And the health and fitness of the species. In a freshwater habitat, that depends upon the health of the species. When compared to the terrestrial ecosystem, aquatic insects get very little space for their survival. Most of the water bodies are used for wastewater disposal from industries, and it creates threat to the fauna. And this uh, 13 different insect orders, they spend at least uh, any of their life stages in uh, water bodies. And these are Ephemeroptera, Odonata, Placoptera, Blattodia, Orthoptera, Hemiptera, Megaloptera, Neuroptera, Trichoptera, Lepidoptera, Coleoptera, Dictera, and Hymenoptera. This uh, Diptera, it is having the maximum number of species that known uh, known, and uh, Hemiptera is the fifth largest insect order in a world. Four thousand nine hundred and forty species known, and in uh, India, around three hundred and thirty-four species of aquatic bugs are known. And this uh, aquat hemiptera, it is, the word hemiptera means uh, it is derived from one of its suborders, that heteroptera. It is having the four wings with the basal half leathery and the apical half membranous. And the size of the water bugs ranges from 0.8 mm to 11 centimeters. And uh, these are hemimetabolous insects means it won't undergo this complete metamorphosis. Only in it uh, uh, perform incomplete metamorphosis. And in total, 4,810 species known. And the functional feeding groups of this insect are um, this heteroprys, predators, herbivores, scrappers, collectors, and gatherers are there. The beneficial role of water bugs are it is, serves as bioindicators, especially in a ocean. It the genus Halobetus that is used to indicate the cadmium pollution, and yes, since it is predatory bugs, and it can control agricultural pests. And uh, some part of our country and other Southeast East Asian countries also, people use these bugs for food. Example, this giant water bug, they 
consume and uh, also this uh, what this insects form food for animals also and um, this uh, the image given above is the smallest uh, in this water bugs known from india that 0.8 mm and uh, this uh, lower one this is the giant water bug this is the largest insect in aquatic uh, bugs known from india and the detrimental role of this water bugs are the seed cause uh, economic loss in water bodies and um, the some of the families blastomatidae notconectinipidae it prey upon the fry of uh, fishes in aquaculture the habit and habit the habit of the water bugs are the semi aquatic heteroptera it found these are the surface dwellers and it uh, uh, found upon the surface of water the infrader geromorpha usually have this habit habit and aquatic heteroptera it is underwater dwellers and the infrader nepomorpha are this uh, aquatic they are purely aquatic heteroptera and uh, some shore dwellers are there uh, infra orders infra order leptopodomorpha having two families in india that uh, those are uh, shore bugs that is having the habit to shore and uh, these uh, habitats are so freshwater habitat both lentic and uh, lotic some are only lentic and uh, some are lotic it uh, some species are found in uh, brackish water example misovelia micronecta some gerids also and in intertidal masses this asclepia species in this uh, this genus from family gerodi is there and in open seas the genus halobetus found and the characteristic features and this uh, hemiptera can be easily identified by their needle like mouth part this uh, it is called rostrum and uh, this uh, triangular scutellum then this hemelytra that uh, basal leathery and uh, apical membranous kind of wing that uh, with that we can easily identify this uh, heteroptera the systematic position the aquatic and the semi aquatic heteroptera is having three different infra orders one is uh, nepomorpha geromorpha and leptopodomorpha nepomorpha is having 11 families they are uh, nepidi belostomatidi chelastochoridi octridi aphylochoridi nacoridi pleidi hinotrephidi notonectidi corixidi micronectidi and the geromorpha is having five families misovelidi hybridi hydrometridi velidi and geridi and in leptopodomorpha this uh, saldidi and leptopodidi these are the families recorded from india total 18 families are recorded from india these are the morphology antenna these are either uh, three segmented or four segmented antennae and uh, head thorax scutellum this uh, abdomen the hemelytra that is the uh, basal half and the apical the basal leathery and the apical membranous wings and uh, in uh, this corixidi instead of having that needle like uh, rostrum it is having somewhat uh, this triangular mouth part triangular rostrum it is having and uh, this one it's uh, looks like coleoptera but it's a hemiptera bug belongs to the family helotrephidae now we will see one by one family and their characteristic features the family nepidae this uh, is commonly called water scorpions it is found in lentic and uh, some this uh, banks margins of the lotic ecosystem also the streams rivers is um, the slow slow flowing area this water this uh, bug 
present. And the size ranges from 18 mm to 50 mm. And uh, this body either ovoid or cylindrical. This, uh, this ovoid or flat kind of uh, bugs belong to the subfamily Nipini. And the cylindrical form, it belongs to the subfamily Ranatri. The image given is the Cercopmetus. It belongs to the subfamily Ranatri. And it is having this uh, raptorial foreleg. It is used to grab their prey. And the rostrum is short, very short, and not lying against the ventral face of its head. The apex of ad abdomen with a pair of respiratory siphon. Only in this genus, Cercotmetus, the tail, this respiratory strap is very short. And to another one family also there from family Nipini, subfamily Nipini, that is uh, genus Montonipa. And that is also having very short uh, respiratory siphon. Other Lacotrifers and other uh, Ranatra, it is having very lengthy respiratory siphon. This respiratory siphon it is used for, for uh, respiration. Then, uh, so these kind of water bugs may survive in uh, slightly polluted water. And uh, this uh, apex, this respiratory siphon is not retractable. Some other one family is there. The next family, Belostomatidae, that is having a retractable um, res respiratory siphon, but in this nipidae, the tail cannot be retracted. Family Belostomatidae, this is commonly called giant water bugs, and the lentic freshwater but it, uh, in standing water also it is present, some uh, running water like uh, streams, rivers, and estuaries also, this uh, bug is present. And the size ranges from 12 mm to 115 mm, that giant water bug. This, uh, its body is ovoid and uh, flat, and the legs are uh, raptorial, front legs, and uh, hind legs sometimes having some swimming CT. Then the rostrum is uh, short. In Nipidae, that uh, rostrum is not uh, lying against the ventral face, but here this rostrum is bent, uh, strongly bent inward, this when, uh, and lying against the ventral face of head. Apex of abdomen with the respiratory siphon here sometimes it is visible and in here it is retracted. And the respiratory straps are cylindrical. Family Gelastochoridae, the common name is toad bug because it looks like toad. And it's mostly found in banks of the freshwater bodies along the mud sometimes we, we cannot recognize its presence also and the size ranges from 6 mm to 15 mm the body is ovoid and stout with warts some body the elytra and the thorax everywhere we can see warts on it and ocelli present in most of the water bugs, there is no ocelli, but uh, in, in the, some few families, it is uh, having ocelli. And uh, raptoria, it is having raptorial leg and the robust femur is there to capture their prey. And the tarsal formula, it is having two is two, two is two, two. From all the pairs of legs having two segmented tarsi. And the rostrum short and lying against the prosternum and the surpassing posterior margin of prosternum. The length of the rostrum varies from family to family and even genus. And antenna concealed in pits beneath eyes. 
this is the character of the infra order nipomapha the antennae we cannot see from above but in pteromapha the antennae is quite prominent it is visible from outside family of pteridae this belongs to the infra order nipomapha and these are velvety shore bugs sometimes it's body seems velvet so it is commonly called velvety shore bugs we'll find it on the banks of the water bodies mostly pond and in muddy area you will see the this insects and the size ranges from 4.5 mm to 9 mm and body ovoid ocelli present antennae concealed in pits and slightly visible sometimes it's slightly visible laterally also near the head and uh, this four femora and other families we saw that are robust to capture their prey but here this four femora it is slender and the tarsal formula is 2 is to 2 is to 3 that means four leg with two tarsus mid leg two uh, two segments and hind leg with three segments and uh, rostrum long and surpassing the posterior margin of hind coxa in the previous family we saw that just reaching the prosternum but here it's a hind hind coxa it's much lengthy rostrum family aphylocheridae it is not having any common names and uh, it is found in a lotic ecosystem mostly lotic ecosystem will get the seen streams and rivers uh, we can uh, collect sometimes uh, in cow dung or if, if it is floated on the water bodies there also it may be some we can collect it from the sides of the boats then uh, under the stones and the substratum over the sand also we will find this box and the body size ranges from 3.5 to 11.5 mm body is ovoid and to flat head much produced in front of eyes antenna short and is slightly visible dorsally was from long and reaching middle of mesosternum and uh, four legs are raptorial in robust and can capture their prey the family nacoridae it is called a saucer box because of its shape and it is also called creeping box and its habitat is pond lakes and the substratum of uh, streams and uh, rivers in pond there is only one species one genus nacoris is found and in other this uh, species they are mostly lotic and mostly found under the uh, this pebbles cobbles large uh, the stones in, in the stream bed in it. and uh, body size uh, if i am to 20 mm body ovoid head is not much produced in front of eyes prostrum short and not surpassing the prostrum so it is having very very short prostrum and legs raptorial here we can see some uh, connection between this uh, rostral length and the uh, this uh, four leg uh, size of the four legs if it is raptorial and then they are having short uh, rostrum and those uh, rostrum is very lengthy and the, it is having a very slender forelimb so there is some connection between some kind of adaptation it is showing and the family philotrophidae and it looks like uh, uh, coleopterans and but it's a uh, um, box and it is commonly called beetle back swimmers habitat is uh, ponds lakes streams and rivers and uh, body size 1 mm to 4 mm the body is ovoid dorsum of body very much uh, convex and uh, antenna small segmented 
in most of the bugs they are having three segmented or uh, in nepoma for three segmented in jeroma for mostly four segmented antennae but here this family helotrifidae it is having two segmented antennae the head is fused with the prothorax and forming a cephalo notum only this uh, helotrifidae is having this character this head fused with the pronotum and the cephalo notum sulcus where the head and the thorax join that area the sulcus it is not straight and the posterior margin of the head is straight then pleidy this uh, it is not uh, this and the, it is commonly called pygmy baxfemus and uh, the its habitat is a pond lakes streams everywhere we will get this then uh, this uh, head it, it is also almost uh, in uh, looking similar to helotrifidae the major difference the head is not fused with the pronotum so it is not having the cephalo thorax it is uh, since it is a distinct groove between which are between this pronotum and the head the body size is a very small water box the so size range from 1.3 to 3 mm body ovoid and the dorsum of the body strongly convex antenna small and three segmented hem elytra with punctures this uh, insect swim upside down and it can trap uh, air bubbles also and uh, sometimes sink under water and can it can respire there and to stay there for long family notonectidae these are uh, commonly called back swimmers these bugs also swim upside down just pr present everywhere and very common in ponds and it is also present in lakes streams reverse estuaries body size 3.5 mm to 16 mm body elongate dorsum of body convex and hind legs very long and over shaped it just to push the water so it it is lay um, up, upside down uh, it swims and uh, it helps in swimming the legs or uh, because it is over shaped it helps in swimming and the family corycidae these are called water boatmen as we saw like notonectidae this also the, with this help of this or shaped this the modified uh, uh, hind legs this can uh, swim very easily and um, this um, this it is found in ponds lakes streams rivers and the estuaries the size 5 mm to 15 mm long then uh, rostrum triangular all other uh, only this super family corixidae yeah? this having micronectidae and this corixidae families it is having the peculiar rostral shape that is triangular rost four legs short and wood shaped and adapted for swimming this is the four legs and the mid and hind legs are uh, slender and uh, with this four legs it uh, uh, it is used in uh, swimming and micro nectidae this uh, commonly called pygmy water boatman found in ponds lakes streams and rivers lentic and lotic ecosystem then uh, when uh, this aquatic it we can collect uh, among the aquatic weeds uh, weeds this algae everything it's the herbi uh, both herbivores and uh, predatory bugs are there then the body size 1.5 mm to 4.5 mm it is having a rostrum triangular four legs uh, short and uh, scoop shaped and uh, uh, adapted for swimming it's four leg four uh, tarsus it is uh, this fused and it uh, is modified and for to 
filter of the filters the food and eat so the four legs are modified like a scoop the hemelytra is having some broken lines some some species having continuous lines misovelidae this uh, belong to infra order jeromafa this all having a very prominent long antennae and this all are surface dwellers and uh, these are commonly called water spreaders and found uh, in atlantic uh, and lotic water bodies and uh, body size 1.5 mm to 4.5 mm body slender winged form also there wingless also there only on the winged form ocelli is present rostrum slender and reach up to mid coxa and the coxa of uh, hind legs placed medially hebridi it is commonly called velvet water bugs it is found in ponds lakes streams and rivers and estuaries body size 1.3 mm to 4 mm body ovate and uh, stout rostrum long reach base of the ventral of body and hind coxae widely placed and known only as winged form other family some most of the some of the family is having wing wingless adults and in this family there is no wingless forms all adults are winged forms family hydrometridae these are called water measurers look like a stick and it walks over the water present on the surface of the waters in among the fresh water the aquatic hydrophytes where you will find this family in this members of this family it is found in both the atlantic and lotic in lotic it is the near margins you will find and the body size ranges from 8 mm to 15 mm body long and slender and the head is long and it is having this anteocular and postocular regions and these eyes are placed in between the almost medially to the head and this is the peculiar character of this uh, family hydrometridae the size almost present medially of the head and uh, rostrum long and uh, not uh, surpassing posterior margin of uh, head since head is very long and this the rostrum not surpassing the posterior margin of head family velidi these are commonly called broad shouldered water bugs because its shoulder is very broad so called so this is called broad shouldered water bug and it is found on lakes and uh, the surrounding waters estuaries also body line, body size 1.5 mm to 6 mm body of different shapes stout short less slender or long and the pronotum is broad rostrum long not surpassing posterior margin of mesosternum family geridi these are commonly called water striders or water skaters sometimes also called jesus bug since jesus walked on water like this also skate over walk over water so this the name and uh, found everywhere fresh water marine water is fresh in marine one genus halobates it is found on open seas also that halobates and uh, some spe- species are endemic and uh, some are winged wingless forms so uh, like this uh, some species share both atlantic uh, and lotic some are purely lotic some like uh, cylindrostethes uh, tilomera those are only found in uh, this lotic ecosystem running waters only we will get 
and the body size ranges from 1.5 to 36 mm body elongate rostrum short reaching base of mesosternum antenna very long body having hydro hydrophobic seat base uh, it is uh, it should not uh, sink in water that uh, for that reason that hydrophobic seat base helps uh, in wetting means uh, help not to wetting the body and may uh, metasternum medially with uh, tent gland opening it uh, ex- its excretion sometimes uh, uh, to deter its uh, predators and uh, the uh, middle legs attached uh, close to the hind legs and surpassing this abdominal apex this hind legs and uh, and uh, this middle legs it's uh, surpassing beyond the abdominal apex family faldidi it uh, belongs to the infra order leptopoda mafa this uh, its habitat only this uh, shore area banks uh, fresh water banks or marine uh, banks only we will get to this intertidal zones banks of the water bodies will get to this over the mud and over the rocks also sometimes we will get to this uh, body size 2 mm to 8 mm body ovate cross from long reaching apex of a hind coxa that means very lengthy thrust and antenna shorter than the body but prominent and the family leptopodidae this also belongs to the infra order leptopodomapha and it is called a spiny legged bugs most of the time we will see some spines on all these legs so it is called spiny legged bugs it is having very lengthy antennae it is found on the banks of the as the saldidi it also share the same kind of habitat and body size 2 mm to 5.5 mm long body elongate rostrum short reaching apex of four four coxa in the previous we saw that is very long up behind the coxa the rostrum was here it is reaching apex of four coxa and antenna long as longer than body sometimes as long as long or sometimes longer than the body legs and body with bristles why we can use hemiptera as a environmental indicators or what to call it for bio indicators how why we can use this hemiptera can be used as this environmental indicators because it is present in everywhere almost all ecosystem this is streams pools rivers ponds lakes estuaries and even open seas this the commonly used insect orders uh, for this biomonitoring purpose is this uh, ephemeroptera plecoptera trichoptera these are the families commonly used because it is uh, means in very pure water they can able to survive so uh, yeah, that those insect orders need high oxygen means level they need so uh, in running waters and in streams forest streams those are found but we need to anal means um, Uh, know the we want to know the quality of all water bodies not only streams we want the lakes and uh, ponds everywhere this low both lenthic and lotic water bodies we want to analyze so this hemiptera it is found everywhere in all water bodies so it can be used as pollution indicators these bugs are large and can be The, we can see with uh, unaided eyes ma- means with ne- our naked eyes simply we can see the uh, bugs and it can be collected by this uh, 28 meshes per inch with um, 0.595 opening that means more the me- me- mesh size smaller the 
size of opening and if it is less mesh size and larger the opening and uh, they are the they are of uh, size that makes them can be easily carried if it is if we use fishes as bio indicators we need a huge large containers and for transportation also difficult so this water box very we can easily carry to the laboratory and the hemipter are very sensitive to stress and it can be used to detect environmental pollution and the because the wingless forms are found in in some of the families the wing the wing form they can migrate for, to the near water bodies but wingless wingless form that they can't move long distance so this can and some um, some of the species also live long and nearly one year they can survive as adults so and uh, if this uh, pollutants are means uh, not frequently uh, 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 discharge no in infrequently they discharge they are pollutants so uh, the pollutant can be washed by the by the waters but the insect stay at that stage it cannot means it can retain those uh, toxins and it reveals the status of that water uh, body where they are living collection of aquatic hemiptera two methods are used one is this is sweeping method and the quick sampling also there like dropping method also there so three methods are there sweeping method this a d shaped aquatic insect net or aerial net is used in a d shaped aquatic net is for purely we collect from water and here net if we want to collect this uh, shore dwelling bugs for that we can use the aerial net and the uh, specimens can be directly preserved in 8% alcohol or some uh, 95% also advisable because when we collect uh, insects we just uh, in the site we put some water also automatically come in in the collect collection process so It is better to collect in 95 percent. That after coming back to laboratory, we can, you can preserve it in 75 percent or 80 percent ethanol. This hardy bugs, or some families that belongs to matidae, nepidae, and the very large bugs, it can be, it should be preserved separately because it may damage. While this while preserving time, it may this flatter their legs or it. can damage the small bugs so always better to preserve the inside the according to their size we should start sorting while, while collecting only better to put inside the large vials and uh, for uh, from each study site uh, take up five scoops five times you have to collect them. so uniformly you you have to do the collections from different sites so we can estimate the Uh, diversity and uh, without error so as uh, when we collect uh, insect no uh, usually fly off so that one before immediately after collection we should look for the flyers to uh, collect without uh, before they are escape we should collect some of the members of families uh, hybridy mythovelidy these, uh, these are very active flyers and the larger specimens can be can hand picked and to put it in that uh, large uh, ml capacity vials so yeah, if we put uh, this the small and large size the large uh, small size this box that uh, that can to the large box and this when starting we will we may miss the smaller insects then uh, this uh, medium sized threads uh, it walk on the wall of the our, our sleeping net where below just below that specimen if we keep uh, the collection jar with uh, alcohol it is dumped over the alcohol so if we use our hand hands you no know, for picking it may damage the specimen so without uh, touching them also by by placing the Uh, jar just below the insect it automatically uh, 
come into that uh, killing uh, jar. And the, the remaining specimens uh, can be emptied in a white enamel tray. From there, with the help of PC, we can one collect that and by keeping 100 ml glass jar, we can put or we can use 2 ml uh, vial also. Uh, in the field itself, we can uh, collect alcohol, dipping the brush in alcohol and we can uh, collect. And the uh, after the collection, leave the sides, the net, uh, net tray, everything will be should be washed in that water only so that we will not take and uh, um, so if it is uh, the nets, then uh, miss uh, uh, some, uh, we can uh, confuse that whether this uh, species is from this uh, particular site or that site. So always we have to wash the net, whatever the uh, kits we used for uh, collection, that should be washed um, thoroughly. And the aerial net that, uh, as I told earlier, that uh, there can be the those insects found on the bank, we can collect the, the for collecting that we, we can use aerial net. And for collecting the bugs on the banks, this uh, slight splash of water, we should know. Come to know whether the bugs are there. So by splashing water, it may move. So we recognize their presence. And the life rock method, uh, some of the, the winged form, it comes in light. Either we can uh, spread a white sheet, hanging sheet, and uh, hang light over that. That way also we can collect or other kind of small portable light rocks are there that you can carry. And between three hours is sufficient from 6 p.m. after the sunset. And uh, say 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. can uh, collect. And uh, for a killing agent, you can use a detergent. And it can be preserved to 8% alcohol. And the light chamber, as nets should be washed thoroughly, this light rod chambers, chamber also should be washed thoroughly. Selection of a sampling site. We should see whether we are collecting for this diversity purpose or taxonomy purpose or for water quality monitoring purpose. For water quality monitoring purpose, we should select three different stations. One is for the reference, that unpolluted water site we have to uh, collect and just below the source of uh, pollution, we, we should take sample. And uh, there is, uh, after coming uh, down, there will be that uh, the uh, severity of that pollution mitigate. No? After that, uh, that zone is called a recovery zone. Then there also we need to sample. Then uh, sorting, preservation, and uh, labeling. The collected uh, samples uh, should be uh, sorted group wise, like uh, this family wise, then you can, then by male or female, then um, wing, the form wingless form, or this adult or like that. In different life stages, we have to uh, sort out and preserve. This uh, same species and infill stages, if we are sure, then we should keep uh, it uh, with the, the same while with the adults. And uh, the samples uh, may be preserved according to their size. We need uh, 2 ml or 3 ml, 5 ml. As per their size, we have to store. And from, for permanent storage, we can use 75% ethanol. Locality label must be put inside the wall because if we stick outside, it may rub off. So always put this locality label with waterproof ink and with high quality ink we should make. And it should have, always should have locality labels. If there is no locality label, then the collections are of no use. It, it, it can be, uh, means uh, it cannot be used for any purpose. So label is the very important thing. And uh, it should have state name, district, or protected areas, or like uh, wildlife sanctuary or national park, whatever that names, village names, and the name of the, if the water body is having names, then the name of the water body, date of collection, name of collector, number of examples, that those all it is, it should have. 
then these are the uh, things uh, tools we need this is the deep frame automatic knife net and white enamel tray for sub brush then tc after uh, transfer it to the white enamel plate from there we can collect uh, the small nets small insects with this uh, tc magnifying glass to see the micro organisms then uh, this uh, then micro insects then uh, this uh, vial then ethanol camera gps gps nowadays uh, gps the co taking coordinates is very important then this rotary ink and the this uh, waterproof uh, this uh, ink rotary ink then uh, high quality paper vedar suit then this um, identified uh, this specimens uh, should be preserved in air tight container and every 6 months we should check whether the soil quality is having the tendency to evaporate so always every 6 months the soil quality should be checked if the color is changing then we need to uh, replace it with fresh alcohol this is the model of the locality level group number of examples family lo locality that is state then uh, district if any protected area village and in those the dates should be mentioned like this and collector name coordinates with altitude and uh, uh, for identification label family name then genus species name with author and year then how many males how many females whether it is winged form or wingless form epit means apterous form msc means macropterous form winged form then who determined and in which year determined and the register number all this locality as well as identity label should be kept in each specimen while after identification identification the collected samples can be identified by the help of the recent literature then representative specimens if we are not a means expert then always it is good to confirm it with the specialist and uh, mostly the identification of bugs cannot be done by examination of morphological character so genetic study is needed and uh, most of the uh, aquatic bugs are similar looking so uh, always uh, this uh, genetic study we can confirm the species and uh, this specimen uh, specimens should be properly labeled and kept uh, as this voucher uh, specimen after confirming it with the uh, authorities and this is the method widely used to monitor the water quality that is hills and hawk biotic index and uh, a biotic index is a scale for showing the quality of an environment by indicating the types and abundance of organism present in a representative sample of the in environment it is often used to assess the water quality and its formula is hti z sigma n i and ti by n n is the number of specimens in taxa a is the tolerance value of taxa and n total number of uh, specimens in the sample so we also count the each in a each genera or if a species how many examples are there that we have to note it down then multiply that total number of examples with each species example with its tolerance value there are tolerance value but unfortunately in hemiptera we don't have such tolerance value now it is our work to find out the tolerance value by studying its the physical chemical parameters of water farmers from north america they have studied several means of thousands of streams and established this tolerance values for some uh, other groups this uh, ept some of coleoptrans other other uh, the seen but separate but they don't, they didn't uh, study and fix assess this tolerance uh, value for this hemiptera so uh, after we find the tolerance value we have to multiply that with the tolerance value and sum all the product and divide it with the whole in a in a particular site you we have to count the total examples of all whatever species that all together all the whole number we have to divide it with that number that is the that value is the 
quality water quality monitoring values that there is a scale we have to check that particular value where it takes this is the example of biotic index i'm doing this uh, this i put it in family wise suppose if we get nipidi uh, 12 examples then i then we have to multiply it with 8 and this uh, likewise uh, multiply with the, the tolerance value each each uh, species then the total value of this uh, n into a and then we divide with the total examples of the particular site so that will show the water quality here 6.41 we got we will check in that uh, table the this is the water quality based on biotic index so the range 0 to 3.75 it's an excellent water quality grade if it is so our water quality it is comes under this 5.76 to 6.51 that is a fairly poor water this value this is a just a prediction value only it is not a correct value just for how to calculate the biotic index for showing that i put this grade it is not the reliable data this is not the reliable tolerance not the correct tolerable tolerance value the tolerance value we have to find out then the assignment of tolerance value the tolerance value can be assigned by <coughs> on the ability of the particular insect to live under a variety of conditions such as low oxygen content in the water and uh, response to the same pollutant it may vary from species to species so it is very important to study the tolerance value for each species not to, um, we should not uh, get to, as such only up to family level uh, it will not work but we should fix tolerance value for each species then uh, the tolerance of the species usually become dominant uh, only in polluted water when in polluted water the species richness will be very less and some of the species it dominate and we collect plenty of examples in one or two species dominate there and we get plenty of examples. And some of the studies made in this water box, not only this, some other studies also, they have selected only few species and studied and they didn't fix the tolerance value also because Tolerance value can be fixed only after studying, sampling so many water bodies and uh, comparing it with the physicochemical parameters. Physicochemical parameters also we have to study along with this um, uh, taxonomy uh, work, means identification of species. Along with that, physicochemical parameters, if it is studied, then the fixing of uh, the tolerance value is possible. So this uh, John Note, he has studied, uh, he considered Eurometra and Ragovili as uh, the indicator of uh, unpolluted water body. And uh, Hassan et al. Noticed, noticed that this uh, sardius, Anisopsu sardius in polluted water. And um, this uh, son, he revealed that the uh, heteroperance can be used as a potential indicator. Uh, group. The physical chemical parameters to be studied is temperature, pH, CO, PC, turbidity, suspended solids, nitrite, nitrate, ammonia, phosphate, CO, this is all characters we should study. With this, we should match it with the diversity of species, then we can be able to uh, ask, uh, fix the tolerance value. Acknowledgement, I thank our uh, director, Madam. For giving me, me to come to me to process, and I thank my supervisor, Dr. Madas, and um, I thank the secretary of UOC, I thank the principal, I thank the coordinator, coordinator of uh, RE, and uh, I also thank the organizing secretary, I thank all the organizers. Committee of RP. Then I thank uh, um, my PhD guide, Dr. Sam Manavadas, 
and i also thank all the participants thank you thank you ma'am thank you dear participants the feedback link has been posted in the chat box kindly fill it gratitude is a sign of noble souls may i now call upon dr r jayan ko assistant professor department of theology biochemistry and college to propose the oath of thanks Good afternoon, everybody. It's my bound duty to thank everyone who are connected to this program. First of all, I thank the God Almighty for enabling us to conduct such a successful FDP program. Next, I would like to thank our honorable secretary sir for providing us this platform with his blessings to conduct this FDP program. Thank you, sir. I extend my warm gratitude to our beloved principal, sir, Dr. Sibira Bahu, and who is the convener of this program. Thank you, sir, for your constant guidance and support. Thank you, sir. I would uh, I am much grateful to our beloved head of the department and coordinator of this program, Dr. B. Radhika, associate professor, who has been a source of inspiration to us to conduct such a useful program. Thank you, madam. My sincere thanks to the organizing secretary of this FTP, Dr. Bhagirath, associate professor, who has taken the necessary steps towards the success of this program. Thank you, madam. I would like to offer my deep sense of gratitude to our resource person, Dr. E. Aaron Jehamalar, who has delivered a good lecture in the field of entomology in water quality monitoring. Dr. Aaron is a good researcher in. aquatic entomology field and uh, the first person delivered a good, uh, good lecture on how insects are used in the field of water quality monitoring and insect of uh, insect or busy schedule to share your time with us thank you madam my sincere thanks goes to the faculty members who have been attending this fpt program from various colleges and universities thank you all i would like to express my thanks to the head of the department of computer science dr s gomathi nayam and his team for helping us technically to conduct this process thank you all finally it is my duty to thank the faculty members of the department for the kind support for the success 